Hi, it's Cajun DIY Diva, and we have a new painting. We're going to paint a magnolia today. Magnolias are a, a very southern flower, and they're very prominent in South Louisiana. And um, w just one of my favorite flowers, very fra fragrant, um, really beautiful flowers. And they're just... Uh, I don't know, they have so much oomph. They just have, they're so big that flowers, the blossoms can be about, you know, about the size of two hands. Um, so I had something else drawn on this canvas already, and um, I'm going to use a marker to draw this so that you can see it better. And I uh, just want to show you what to use to get started when you're going to set up your painting place. You want to have like some kind of plastic cover over whatever table you're going to use. You want a couple of brushes. You want uh, some kind of palette. I'm just using a paper plate and I have paints, acrylic paints. I have a water cup to rinse my brushes. I have a napkin because I like to blot off my brushes. And you can use an easel or you can lay your painting flat, either way, whichever you prefer. Um, watercolor artists lay their paintings flat so that it doesn't drip. And if you're using thin paints, um, that's probably a good idea to do your painting flat so that the water doesn't drip down, unless you want that effect. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing, and I'm going to kind of start a little below center, and I'm just going to do that that bumpy bud that's in the center of a magnolia and I'm going to do let's see a petal coming off of it and another nice big petal coming off of that here's one um, let's see we'll do a petal on this coming out this way. And I'm going to have it kind of overlap that one. And I want to give it some dimension, so I did that. Um, here's a little back petal on the flower. Here's another big petal. Let's do one. This one's going to, it's kind of like from the side, a side angle of the petal. Let's see. I want to make it more come to the center like that. Maybe make this one overlap it a little bit. And here's another side petal. And then I want to draw some leaves. So, um, Magnolias have very large leaves, so I'm going to make it kind of go off the page. I'm putting these lines because when I'm painting, I don't want to forget which one of these is a flower petal and which one of these is supposed to be a leaf. And you would be surprised. It's not that hard to get them confused. And the petals can kind of, the uh, the leaves can kind of go anywhere. So, okay, so that's the drawing and now I'm going to start painting. So I think I will start with um, some, I'm going to just put some white on the paintings and, um, well, there you've got a little smear from the marker. But you know what? I'm going to work with that because it's kind of coming out to be a blue smear. Um, so here's something painting with uh, doing markers first. If I want it to be white, I'll come back and let that dry and kind of come back over it. So this is, you know, I, I like to experiment a lot and you know, it, sometimes you get happy accidents, just like the late, great Bob Ross always said. And this little thing that's happening with the marker is what I would call a happy accident. 
because it's smearing. I could, uh, sometimes when I do my classes, I draw with a Sharpie. And a Sharpie, if you used a Sharpie to draw like this, it wouldn't bleed like you're seeing, as, at least not as much. Okay, so I put some white in just about all the white leaves, white flower petals. Now I'm going to go for some green. So I have phthalo green on my palette. I'm going to take some chrome yellow, mix it together, and make a greener green than what the phthalo is. And just go ahead and paint in some flower petals. And I kind of like to get the whole canvas covered with paint. Um, it's just something about a very satisfying feeling to not see any um, white areas left on the canvas, but then you can spend a long time doing details. I am a fast painter, um, but I can spend a long time doing details just as long as anyone else. I know a lot of people who are very slow painters on purpose and uh, you know everybody should have their own different style and individuality with their art. Okay so now I know where all my leaves are and now I'm going to uh, do the background in red, I think, and I'm going to probably, this is a very bright red, it's going to make this picture look a little bit Christmassy. Um, so with this bright red, I think I'm going to add just a tiny speck of the phthalo green in there, brush it in go back into my red, blend that, and let it kind of darken the red a little bit and make the red more opaque and just give the red some depth. So that was just a tiny little bit of phthalo green in my red. If I really blended it, it would kind of uh, start to make a brown color if you mix this phthalo green. The phthalo green has a high blue content to it. If you painted it on by itself, but sometimes see a little bit of that green just smeared in there. I don't even need to pick up any more phthalo green because I just got some from the leaf right there. Um, So yeah, so the phthalo green has a lot of blue in it, so when you mix a red, you get the browns, purplish, burgundy tones, and it's good to experiment with colors like that. See how the colors, all paints, all brands of paints um, are a little bit different. And while you're painting this, you know, if you want to go ahead and paint the sides, you can do that. Um, I always recommend painting the sides of a traditional wrapped canvas. And um, you can go ahead and put it in a frame later if you want to, but then um, it's also suitable for hanging right on the wall. I, I prefer to frame really nice pieces because I think it just finishes them off in a really nice way. But you can certainly just paint the sides and it does make it look kind of finished. I've got that one little red piece left. I'm smearing it all over my easel right now. And then I'm going to paint the, the little bud in the center um, a little bit more orange, so I'm going to pick up some yellow. I put some red, I'm going to pick up some yellow. 
and just kind of fill that in right now. And I'm just going to kind of go back in the red and just kind of dot, 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 dot. I want to have kind of a texture on this bud because it is kind of bumpy. So I dotted it with the red. Now I'm going to come back again with the yellow and just dot, 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 dot. And just let it have that texture. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to come back to the white and I'm going to kind of cover those initial um, marks of the the marker because I don't want it to be this outlined I want it to be um, more subtle than that so I'm just going to take white and kind of cover those those black lines now while I'm doing that I'm going to pick up a little yellow and I'm going to paint some yellow kind of in the lighter areas, places where I want it to be a little bit lighter. And again, mixing that yellow with the white. So you don't really want bright yellow. And then coming back over again with white. Just to make it a little more subtle. And remembering to cover those lines. So we're just kind of fading those lines out. So now the magnolia has much more of a yellowish tinge to it. I'm going to wipe the yellow off my brush. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to wipe the yellow off and I'm going to add more white now. Just give it another layer of white. and Let that white kind of pile up on the canvas. I, I like the texture of it to have like a lot of, I'm really loading my brush up with a lot of paint and there's a spot I didn't get yet. So I'm really loading my brush up with a lot of paint and I'm going to need some more white. And I probably need to let this dry a little bit so that I can come back and add even more white. Now right there I just got a little smear of the red from the background and I that's another happy accident. So I'm going to let that kind of go around. I really like how that looks. So it's great to let the colors that are on your painting smear and let, just kind of let your painting kind of figure out what it wants to be. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I've let the painting, it's pretty, pretty close to being dry now. I'm sorry, I'm, all of a sudden I have the hiccups. So now I'm going to paint some more white to go back over and freshen up the areas and just brighten up some of these areas where I really want the white to show. And now it's covering because before it had too much paint on it. So it wasn't covering. Now 
I'm loading up my brush with white. I'm putting a lot of white on my brush. I want the texture of all of that paint. So I'm just really loading up my brush. Now, just now when I did that, I got some red. So let's just kind of see what happens if I let that red stay on my brush. So since this is a petal in the back, with that little bit of red, it kind of works. But for this one in the front, I'm going to want it to be all white. It's good to use a very thick paint sometimes. You can get, um, there's so, so many nice heavy body acrylic paints you can get these days. And that's what I recommend using for when you want something, I mean, to kind of mimic an oil painting. Um, they make so many nice uh, acrylic paints these days. And um, you can, you know, do a painting without having to go through the trouble and the, the time it takes to paint. Um, an oil painting and all of the, you know, cleaning the brushes. So now I'm going to, I'm putting another layer of paint on my leaves because I want them to be more opaque. And so I mixed a little bit of white into my green color and that is making it more opaque. to get more green. Put a little bit more white in there. I think I'm just going to widen this leaf. And this one. So now I did that. Now I want to go into yellow and just kind of pick a side of the leaf and just do a big yellow um, highlight on one side of each leaf. And I'm just doing this, I'm loading up my brush again, really thick. This yellow is a little bit thinner than um, my white, but I'm still loading it up. And I really want to see the yellow. I'm not blending it all the way in. I want to see it just laying on top of that leaf. And I'm using up all of my yellow to do this. So now I'm going to go back to the green and I'm going to add a little darkness on the other side of the leaf. And it just kind of gives drama to the leaves, makes them look very kind of almost like impressionist looking. Not that this is in any way a, an impressionist painting, but it does kind of give it that look. Now I'm going to go back to my little uh, bud in the center and I've made kind of a mixture. It's sort of a burgundy color with some red and blue. And I just want to kind of deepen the color and maybe add to the that bud that was in in there because it just it was a little too light so I'm doing this burgundy color but I'm going to come back with the bright red and still add bits of the bright red and still come back with the bright yellow and add 
just some little highlights in there of the yellow. Now I think I will take that burgundy color, add a little white to it. Actually, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of the burgundy color to white, and it sort of makes kind of a beigey color, kind of a beigey pink, maybe a little more white. And I'm just going to kind of contour these flower petals. You've got a, got a lot going on with these flower petals. They're, um, they've got some white, some blue, some yellow, almost a little tinge of, of green. But they're really coming out nicely and I love how it looks with the texture of all of that white that's in there. So you could see how you could still see the the white. You can still see the yellow, but you're just adding that little touch of this soft color that's coming in from the background. And now I want to do deepen the background color a little bit also. I give myself a little bit more red. And clean my brush because I don't want the white and all the other colors that were on it in there. And I'm going to mix some red with some of that burgundy color that I was just using and try to really deepen the red color. I do still want it to be red. I just want it to be a little bit deeper. And it just depending on your paints, some paints are better than others, some brushes are better than others. And oh, look what I did. That was a big boo-boo. But we'll fix it. Let me just I'm just gonna keep let me just kind of grab some of that off of there. And I'm just gonna keep working on my on my red in the background and then I'll come back and I'll fix that and I'll show you how to fix a problem like that when you have a boo-boo like that and I do this pretty often so what I'm going to do is actually the, the white paint was so thick that I was able to just wipe it off with my finger and I'm just kind of what was left, I'm just going to contour it into the flower and maybe give myself another big bump of white, chunky white right there to go along with it. And I think this could use a little bit more of that kind of beige color right here. And I think I'll take just a little bit of black and soften the black with some white to make kind of a, a gray and kind of like take care of some of these outlines. Where the blue and the gray come together where the blue where the blue the black marker was and kind of where it's still showing I'm just gonna add a little bit of soft gray and it's just about what I want for it right now um, I could do some veining in the leaves, but I think I'm going to leave them because I like them a little more abstract. So I think it's good the way it is. So this is Cajun DIY Diva. Please um, click like if you like this video. 
please um, subscribe to my channel. I have other painting videos that are available and I'm going to be putting up a few more very soon. Um, so please um, add me to your list of you know your channels that you subscribe to and um, I will see you next time. Thank you.